Well, so SVN and Perforce we support. You can use either one of those. Um, and you know, down the line, yeah, we want to continue rolling out you know integration support for for other tools. Uh, we started out with those two simply based on their popularity amongst the industry, um, how many folks were requesting additional support. Um, but again, this is all about external tool flexibility. So I take the same answer I gave about the script editor options that I'll give about the 3D art options that we want to allow you to be as flexible as possible. So uh, yeah, we do want to look to add additional hooks down the line for other tools while simultaneously improving our own built-in tool so that you can take our version and adopt that. Or if you already use something else, we want to fit into your workflow as naturally as possible. So um, yeah, you know, you, you can expect to see some down the line. Nothing to commit to right now that I can say this feature is coming, um, but it's just part of our general philosophy. Okay, cool. I got a product evangelist question I just thought of. Mm -hmm. um, what are what are you as a product evangelist, and then Unity 3D as a whole? Um, what are your what are your plans in terms of reaching the game developers? Like, or other than going to the events and talking in forums, is there any other extracurricular activities? Mm -hmm. unique activities to actually go in and reach them? So, uh, yeah, um, you know, so, you know, look, there are conferences and events like this that we come to. Uh, there are forums where we reach out. Um, there are things like user groups, uh, whether they're Unity user groups, like I'm meeting with the Berlin user group tonight, uh, mm -hmm. or going to meetup events like meetup.com mm -hmm. where it will be the Bay Area mobile developers group. And they're just there to kind of talk shop about various things. So uh, there are lots of ways to go out and reach developers. Uh, but at the core of it all, it's about going out and talking to them. You know, we really believe in having a face and a personality, not a marketing campaign only. Now, of course, we want a marketing campaign that involves emails and ads and things like that. But it's about going to places and actually talking to folks. You know, we, we come from a core belief that it's important to actually talk to the people that you want to have using your product. And you know, we talked about this today that here I am having a conversation with you, Mario, and we want to have that, to let people have access to us. Uh, this is why our CEO still occasionally posts on our forums. Our CTO does the same. Our engineers are constantly asked to stay on the forums and stay present. Um, so that you know, folks always have a way to, to touch us, to talk to us. And so while going out and reaching out to new developers, the core thing is how can we be there to talk to them? And as we joke, that's why I have an insane travel schedule mm -hmm. right now is because I'm trying to be as many places as possible to talk to people in person or over Skype. Uh, to, to you know, have first-hand conversations to let them know that we're serious about this and we're serious about our tool and serious about empowering their capabilities. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. So you're going to be talking at 5 o'clock today Correct. at the DroidCon mm -hmm. and we don't want to give away anything. So Mario, if you're going to be available, I'll live stream it for you. Yeah. If you're gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll try to live. Yeah. That's okay. I can live stream it, right? I, I, I don't mind. I, it's only whether the DroidCon people mind and I, no, I, I don't care. You can feel free to live stream it, and you know, I, I'll be doing a blog post about it and about the key talking points anyway, um, because I know that all of the developers on the Unity community forums are dying to know what I'll have demoed today, uh, what I demoed over the weekend, and what I demoed at Google I/O. So part of that next week's worth of work is getting some blog items up about what we've talked about. So even Apart from a live stream, for anyone else that's out there, um, we'll, we'll be putting some news up on, on our blog about it. Okay, so this talk at 5 o'clock this afternoon at DroidCon in Berlin, are you going to like introduce something new that you didn't in Google I.O.? Um, well, no, it's largely going to be some of the same information, um, mm -hmm. although it's going to be a bit more in the product focus, because it, at Google I.O. we didn't show like, you know, we showed the editor and we showed content on a device, but today I'm going to show like, actually look how easy it is to hit the build and run button. And it just does a build and install on the device, like not having to touch the terminal window and, and use any of the, the development kit itself. Cool. So I'll be showing some different aspects because this is a more developer focused, yes. whereas that stayed a little bit higher level. We had five minutes of people's attention, whereas here I've got a full half an hour to talk. So um, it'll largely be the same set of information, but it'll also include a high level overview of Unity because a lot of folks here don't know our tool. Um, and then some specifics about Android support and, and of course where we're going in the future in general. Um, you know, kind of some of the product philosophy discussion we've had today. So um, a little bit different than we showed at, at Google I.O., but uh, largely the same. Okay, great. How are we for time, Marcus? Like how many, how long is this so far? About 42. Okay, a couple mm -hmm. more questions. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? I'm, I'm good to go. Okay, I'm not, I forgot. Mario, do you have one? Um. I lost my turn. Yeah, I'm interested about your thoughts about tablet development as of late. The iPad is out, uh, uh, um, and I've seen you have had a 
demo of, uh, of an NVIDIA Tigra on the Google I.O. Uh, conference. Yep. What do you think? Is this, is this going to be important or is the R tablets as gimmicky as they sound? Um, <clears throat> uh, that's a tough question. I, I definitely see that there's a little bit of a gimmicky side to them. But, you know, really having had both an iPad in my hands mm -hmm. and the, the Tegra tablet from NVIDIA, it is a very nice form factor. Um, do I think it's going to replace laptops or replace phones in our pockets? No, it, it's a different size of device. It doesn't, doesn't fit my pocket nicely, mm -hmm. and it's a little too small to justify carrying a, a full backpack for. So, uh, you know, I can see them in very specific applications. Uh, I can picture somebody walking around a hospital uh, having it, access to lots of information in a quick and easy way, right? Replacing a clipboard that somebody might carry around. I can see them as excellent at-home devices where I really want to have my photos and videos and maybe do some casual reading and some light web browsing because it's a very nice form factor for that lightweight and easy to carry around. Um, it's like, you know, why are the Amazon Kindles so popular? Uh, it's because it's very nice to carry something around like that with hundreds of books on it instead of literally toting around that many books. So um, I, I think some of their initial surge of popularity is a bit based on a gimmick factor, but I think long term folks are going to really settle into some nice uses for them. And I, I think they offer incredible potential based on their larger screen size. Um, so it fits that gap between the phones, so kind of on the small side, and laptops still kind of on the big side uh, quite nicely as this nice little portable tablet. So I, I think they got a lot of life in them. Hey, I got a question for you. With Unity 3D, or are they doing that already, thinking of sponsoring like um, a few game developers? What um, that mean? So, uh, yes, and we have. Um, like last year, we had what we called the Unity Summer of Code, um, admittedly uh, a almost direct copy of Google Summer of Code, where we put out an invitation for students in specific to submit proposals to us of things they wanted to work on over the summer under the mentorship of Unity staff. And we took on five projects. Uh, four of the five reached completion, and we have that content up available for free on our website, and the students received cash payment for it. Wow. So they got some work, they got professional experience, they got the mentorship of our staff, and they got payment. So they have something to put on their resume and experience, and a little cash in their pocket, and of course, a lot to, to have learned from. So wow. uh, we've done things like that to um, sponsoring development contests where we offer prizes. Um, and things like that. So, you know, yeah, we, we again come from the up and coming game developer background in a lot of ways ourselves. And um, so we want to support folks that are in that same position. And uh, yeah, we do that kind of stuff often. Um, and when unique opportunities come up, we go ahead and jump on it. Will you do it this year or next year? Uh, well, I assume we haven't announced it yet. Okay. Um, it looks pretty solid that we'll, we will do another Unity Summer of Code this year. Mario, um, will you be interested? Well, I think I will. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, watch our website, uh, our blogs, uh, the forums, because when it comes up again, we'll, we'll do an announcement about it. Um, but it was a pretty fun cycle to go through last year, and uh, I think the students that participated really liked it. And it got us some cool new things to put up, uh, like the detonator system, which is this really cool explosion framework that you can just drop into any project. Uh, now folks can get that for free off of our website, and it's a really cool tool addition that we got for comparably low development cost and the student got some experience. So it kind of worked out for everybody. So that's why I think we'll do it.